After many, many years, the franchise that, honestly, I skipped out most of it, but I did rewatch the trilogy. Anyway, Men in Black International is finally home on DVD. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Action X. Um, this is Joe here, um, bringing you yet another DVD unboxing for you today. We're branching out to the Men in Black world. Um, I've watched Men in Black 3 in theaters before seeing 1 and 2, so... Um, I, I don't know why. I don't remember why. I, I guess I, I thought it was cool or something. I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't remember. 2012 was so so uh, so long ago. But um, I was actually surprised the franchise didn't continue uh, fairly right away. I thought 3 did successfully well in terms of the box office. So I wasn't entirely sure why a fourth one wasn't made. And then over the many, many years, there were rumors about a 21 Jump Street crossover. And then a female version of the Men in Black franchise. And now here we are. We're, we're getting the first spinoff. And... I'm sad to say probably the only spinoff we'll get for a long time of the Men in Black series in Men in Black International. So here it is, Men in Black International. Um, it just came out in June recently, and I was supposed to see this in theaters, but this came out at a time where stuff was happening in my life where I didn't have the time to go, slash it was difficult, because I, I don't like seeing movies by myself. So when it came to Men in Black International... Um, there just wasn't anyone I could see. And the people I, were, I was thinking about seeing it with were all busy. And then eventually by the time we were able to do something, the, the movie was out of feeders because it was success. Um, not, I'm sad, so, sorry. Uh, unsuccessful. Uh, yeah, I can't speak English today. I'm sorry. Um, it was not... It didn't make a lot of money, and a lot of years start taking it out. It was kind of part of a purge of movies. Like, these, like this, Dark Phoenix, and Child's Play were all, like, big movies. Uh, so we thought, but then when they came out, they didn't perform as um, well as people thought it was going to be. And I was honestly surprised Men in Black International didn't take off as it would. And it does have a, there's a conversation to be had there, but maybe on, for another time on another show. But here it is. So here we have the post, the, um, the cover. I am not sure if this is reusing anything. I'm pretty sure it's one of the promo shots. From one of the from one of the marketing um, pushes, I don't remember where. I think I saw these poses before, but I, I'm not really sure. But we do have Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson in the front once again reuniting the Ragnarok duo back for another one. And I guess they they, they saw everyone saw Ragnarok like yeah we can recreate this for um, in a spy world and. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, here we have the side profile where we have the two agents, um, agent. I want to, uh, Agent M and Agent, what is it? They did not bring it. Um, spoilers, um, I haven't seen the movie. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Um, we got the bag. We got some pretty cool um, shots of all the main characters of the movie, including a very adorable little blue alien. Um, again, haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't have any, I don't know the, the exact name of the, the creature. Um, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Um, open it. It's just a silver disc with the um, the logo, and that's pretty much it. Um, this is very weird, and I don't like doing this, but I, I did want to give some some of my um, early opinions on this. Um, so again, like I said, I didn't see Men in Black International in feeders. I was going to, but then stuff happened, and then I heard every the all the production problems they had with this movie, and I think about I I, I talked about it on a Legio Talk episode before. Um, I really don't know why Sony didn't let, um, again, it's, it's a hearsay, he, she said situation where it's like, we don't know the full story, we don't know what really happened behind the scenes, um, we don't know. Um, and it sucks to say, cause like, there was a lot of hype for, a lot of, like, a lot of good amount of, like, buzz for this movie, obviously, you got the two main stars right here, you got Liam Neeson, you got some returning characters from the original trilogy, um, you got all these new characters, you got Kumel, um, Najee as the, um, one of the, 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 the short sidekick, um, alien character, uh, I honestly thought this was gonna be at least pretty good, and, um, from what people said, it wasn't out. I, I just started seeing the movie. I was seeing it with a friend recently, but stuff happened. We had to cancel it. Um, so I only got to see the first 10 or so minutes of the movie. It, I'm basing this off the first 10 to 15 minutes. So again, the movie, could, like the whole movie could change my mind. I'm just giving you my immediate thoughts on the first 15 minutes. And this is very weird for me to do, considering the fact I usually try to see a movie from start to finish, but I did promise my friend that I would see it in full when they return. So I'm going to hold this movie off for a while. Um, but in the first 15 minutes alone, I honestly... Uh, because I had... Now, here's my, my weird trajectory with the Men in Black franchise. I've seen the first one recently. I did not see the second one, and I saw the third one in theaters um, seven years ago. So I have a very weird track 
with the Men in Black series. But if I'm going to compare this one to the first one, which honestly I do, I did immediately see that this was supposed to start its own independent sub-series within the Men in Black franchise. Maybe they were going to do a fourth one, a proper fourth someday. I really don't know. I didn't know. I don't know what Sony's plan is for this franchise, especially now after this movie came out and did not do as well as it should have. Um, comparing this to Men in Black One, I don't know. Like I don't have enough of Chris. Han like I think they were just trying to imitate. Like Chris Hemsworth is just acting a little bit too much, like um, Thor from the from Ragnarok onwards. Um, that persona, and again, I haven't seen Chris Hemsworth in anything besides Thor. So this was kind of this was my this was my first movie. I'm seeing him. That's not Thor, so it's a bit different for me. I don't know. Uh, it's like it's like when you see an actor for so long as a character, as one specific character, then when you see other other uh, projects with them playing a different character, at first it's a bit jarring since like you can only see them as that original character. So for me, I've only seen Thor, um, Chris Hemsworth as Thor. So in this one, I, I haven't seen the whole movie yet, but I'm, I've only seen him, I'm, I'm only seeing him as Thor in like a very weird le lesser version of his um, Thor character from Ragnarok. As for Tessa Thompson, I think she's doing pretty good. She did pretty okay-ish so far. Um, some of the acting is a bit like on the nose. It's not like a hundred percent good. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not taking any away from these actors. They're really great actors. They did amazing films before. It's just as so far from the first fifteen minutes, I have not yet been like sold on this movie. But um, I, I do. I'm enjoying it from the first fifteen minutes. How will my full opinions fare? I do, I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. But anyway. That's it. So go pick up Men in Black International now uh, in Target and Best Buys um, for 20 bucks. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, do whatever you want with this video. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.